So, can you hear me okay? Yeah? Okay. Um, for those who don't know me, uh, my name is Nahue Garrisa. I am a software developer at Campines. Um, I'm also a teacher. I teach auxiliary programming in Buenos Aires. Um, this time I'm going to present to you um, Quiz University, which is a tool that we, some of you might already know, which is the tool that we are used to, um, used to teach object-oriented programming. Um, how this has been evolving uh, on the implementation, um, the features that we have. So, the main ideas behind Quiz University are that the tool should be simple and like consistent. <coughs> That's why we based on Quiz. Um, also, uh, we want to. We always use TDD in our classes to, to teach uh, from the very beginning. So we, we wanted to have um, like support on the tool. Like, for instance, we use the debugger as much as we can, and doing uh, as much live programming as, as we can. So, and the idea is that for students, it should be something the most easiest to learn. I mean, object oriented is not uh, something maybe easy to grasp, but uh, if we don't add too much complexity to the tools, we will make life easier to learn. That's the, the, the main idea. Yeah? It's something that uh, started a year ago uh, by Maximo Brito and Anand. They have the idea implemented uh, the denotative objects um, model to work with uh, concrete objects and not with classes to start working on an incremental way of, of learning OP. And now, um, we have more tools integrated and some things that I will show you uh, today. Um, it's just one year from last last small talk. Uh, are now presented the not at the objects and some things I, I, I will show you some of the progress that we made. Um, we are using this tool in three universities at the moment. In Buenos Aires, we are not a big community. It's just uh, Hernan writing a, a lot of code and uh, some of us contributing some small things. We have also some students uh, doing some contributions to the tool, and this was great. Um, yeah, the, the idea is also to uh, start uh, telling the world about this <laughs> this tool um, for people to start to try it because uh, I think it's a it's a good way. Well, I, I will show you the conclusions, but uh, it's not just uh, good for learning object programming. It's, like, it's for for every small talker, I think it's a good experience to, to try. So for the denotative object, which is the most uh, main part of the, the Quiz University project. We have um, implemented uh, the same set of tools that we always use in a traditional smalltalk environment. Like browser, inspector, and bugger, they all work uh, with these classless objects. Um, in fact, it wasn't too hard to uh, to build it because uh, it's just uh, extending the current set of tools and um, like wiring them with the right input, so the rest of the tools should work. And um, behind the scenes, the the notative objects are just classes. Um, the students don't see them, so that's the, the interesting thing. We shape the tools to, to like hide in this complex concept and they can work with concrete examples and then uh, iterate to them um, later on the, the learning process they can introduce classes incrementally in their projects. We also have uh, if you don't want to work with 
classes, um, you can work with prototypes just like self does. We have a model that is very uh, inspired on the self. And you can find relationships between parent and child objects, and you can do delegation. Um, you also can clone a denotative object to create another one. Uh, actually, we have two ways of uh, like having different objects. One is cloning, that is an exact copy of uh, all uh, attributes and methods. And you can you need to give it a name. And we have replicants, which is uh, it's the same as cloning, but the behavior is uh, shared. So that is interesting because uh, we can do something very similar to instantiation in classes, but with replicants. So it's, it's an equivalent model. So you, as a teacher, want to uh, go through the prototypical uh, approach. You can do that in the tool because uh, it's pretty much the same uh, set of tools. And, uh, you have support, right? Um, something that we also added is uh, like a feature that you can turn a denotative object into a class. Um, it's not something uh, very uh, hard, it's just copying the methods to a, to a class, um, giving it a, a name. So that way the students can uh, introduce this change and use also refactoring, which is uh, something that we um, also added. Um, yeah, having like a just a normal way of working, even with classes or without classes. It's just the same experience bundled with the same tool. For, uh, I said before that we want to teach with TDD, so we have a very integrated support for running tests, defining tests. Um, we introduced a denotative object that is the assert object for writing assertions because uh, if you remember as you need force you to define a class you need to class this case and write self assert um, it's something that we didn't want to show yet to the students um, that's why we created an object that is the assertion which is uh, works exactly the same with a different uh, name of the assertion but it works exactly the same as SU. So, and the last thing that we work on the notative object is a graphical uh, representation of the notative object. And uh, it's the same denotative object, but it has a reference to a morph. So you can, uh, like having a, well, I, I will show you uh, right now. Let me go through some examples that I have. Uh, is it fun to look in the Yep. Um, as I say, you can work uh, with the uh, other objects using a special browser that is a specialized tool. And feel like it is pretty much the same as the browser, but uh, you won't see classes. Yeah. You will just see. Uh, the objects. So the notative objects are uh, defined in uppercase, just like a class, but it's, uh, you can actually send message to it. So we can create, for instance, a new object. Let's call it quiz. Um, this is a complete live environment. So you can actually start inspecting the object here. So, you don't have to do instantiation because we, we are not teaching that yet, right? And you can define some messages to this particular object, like the speed, for instance. So let's return. This is something that. Uh, This is one of the libraries that we integrated for work with units. So actually, this is an object that represents uh, next speed measure. Um, 
you can say that and try it. You can try it here. Of course, I did send, it doesn't show me the result, but I can send and inspect the result of this. And also, um, I can work with the top uh, uh, bottom panel to do like a workspace thing. So I can do, uh, I can try the same that I did, but on this uh, section. So the idea is that everything should be uh, like, uh, there should be a way to inspect everything uh, from almost everywhere. So you can debug this and also work with the inspectors in the same way that you will do with uh, classes, right? Um, I can do, uh, let me show you another example of a child object. So let's say that we have a fast quiz that does uh, not uh, more speed than the regular quiz. Um, I set the parent objects and then I see that there's a relationship. So you can actually teach, if you want, you can teach inheritance but without using classes. So it's a choice for that. This is something that we, all, we, we wanted because we have different, different uh, OOP courses and classes and we want to have a flexible tool. So if, if we want to work with prototypes, we can do um, using tool. So I can, uh, let's say that we want to override the speed. Um, and let's say I want to use the speed of the quiz option. Um, to, to doing so, we can, um, we have a reference to a parent object, which um, is similar to super, but don't say that. <laughs> it's um, it's the same as super, right? Because uh, it's um, it's the same method we got at the behind the scenes. It's, it's interesting because uh, I think this is working. Yeah, it's, it's equivalent to super. And I can just what I did. Uh, Uh, it's just I want to have the same speed, just multiply by two, and I save this, and I can just use the result here. So I have uh, the speed of this particular option. Um, but this is a very brief summary of what we have. Uh, let me show you a couple of examples using graphical denotative objects that. This is an experiment that we are trying. Uh, it's a very, it's a very uh, prototype uh, stage. Uh, we expect them. We, we expect to have some uh, interest from the students who work with this uh, graphical representation of objects. Maybe it can help uh, for them to grasp some concepts and just not working with just a uh, very like, abstract representation of objects <coughs> like this one. Um, maybe it's, it's good sometimes to have a, like, a more visual uh, representation. So uh, what we did is uh, working with objects that are um, <coughs> child children of the notative object morph, which is, uh, is, is the, the, the way that we have to define the not of the objects, but with a graphical representation. Uh, we have a couple of examples here, like a live object that we can actually... As you can see here, you can just uh, see the object or hide, hide it, change some properties. Um, one thing that uh, I started to work on is like... Um, relationship between like domain model objects and graphical representations. So we did like an uh, like an observer pattern in the invitation so we can have like a quiz view object which is uh, let me see where it is here is the quiz. So this is an object, this is a graph the notative object uh, morph that is observing uh, our quiz object that is from the domain. So the quiz has a position and 
I can just uh, tell you who is to move around. So what it uh, does is notifying the uh, using the regular um, event system that is built on quiz. So what happens is that first of all we observe an object. So when we observe an object, we uh, have a way to tell uh, which events are we interested in. So for the quiz view, which is an image view, we are interested in the position. Um, on light, we are interested in the position and also a color, for instance. So it's, uh, you can tweak which events you are interested in, depending on the shape of the object. Um, so what it does is uh, using, as I said, the uh, event um, system that is used on, on the rest of the quiz. Okay. Um, on the domain, you have, uh, let's say, I want to run the quiz. Okay. I just use uh, I just use the same shortcuts and the same uh, tools, so I, I can. Even, uh, use uh, yeah the same sort of shortcuts that I use under for the rest of the tools I can uh, use here. So here I'm browsing the quiz object, and when you change the position, uh, this trigger event does the trick of notifying the the objects, the objects that are observing this uh, object. So. Yeah, I can just having a having them together. Uh, just I can do this, and you can do even this. <laughs> so it's interesting because uh, we can take up next level on, on, on the way we uh, build our exercises because sometimes the students say, "Oh, this is too boring," and, and Maybe they don't see the results. They uh, we encourage them to work with tests, but they don't actually like it a lot. And it happens most of the time. So maybe this is just an idea of uh, having having them more engaged on the tool. And but it's also good for uh, other purposes. Uh, for instance, let's say you want to uh, like encourage students to work with TD and try to enforce them um, to, or just suggesting them to, to work following the techniques. So you are, so you are testing. You should uh, only write a failing test. You are allowed to do that. And when you pass that step, you are allowed to write some code. And then you optionally, if it makes sense, you can refactor. So. I have an object here that is uh, like represents a TDD session. So if I do this, I can see here on a graphical object that, um, like, at this moment I should write a test. Right? This is this is not. Uh, it's just a prototype. The tool is not implemented yet, but it's to show you the idea of a graph. How a graphical denotative object can be used for for different purposes. So I can do this one. So I. In the code step, what I can do in our factor. So, so, yeah, it's not just interesting just for fun or just for students, it can be also helpful for uh, even the teacher itself. We wanted to, to have like a, a way to work with these uh, options. Any questions so far? Okay, uh, let's move on uh, on other aspects that we have, uh, other pieces of the tool. Um, another important one is refactoring that uh, Hernan showed yesterday. This same set of refactors is also uh, integrated with the notative uh, objects and quiz university in general. Um, Well, uh, we already seen yesterday that uh, refactoring model is implemented from scratch. Um, it's a 
actually a very flexible model and interesting because you can uh, manipulate uh, ASD or text and that is uh, very powerful. Um, we have some refactors and not all of them implemented. Uh, we are in the process of adding them. Actually, a man is, <laughs> which is can leave uh, him a couple of hours and to implement some refactors. Um, the idea is that we can use these refactorings uh, to implement more refactorings, more complex refactorings. For instance, I have a piece of code that I don't like it because it have it has some if statements. So it will be very good. Um, this is, I think this is something that we can uh, implement in the future, like uh, selecting a piece of code and say replace it if with polymorphism. Of course, with the right uh, input, it will be a lot of input from the from the developer. Uh, it will be very nice because this is something that we show uh, a bunch of time how to clean up some code. Um, it will be good to have some support on the, on the tool. Um, apart from that, we have some uh, libraries integrated with the environment that are bundled together. So um, we can work with units using Aconcagua, which is uh, our measurement model. You, you can use some units that are bundled by default, and you can define your own units to work with distances or weight units or uh, Time units well, for for time, especially we have some ten, which is the uh, calendar model. That's based on Kawa. And as I said before, we have the assertion uh, calendars. So this, this helps us to uh, teach using uh, to teach like the right way, not to implement some. Let's say if I have an account with some balance that is money. I want to use a money object, not just a number to represent that. That's why we are uh, heavy users of Agukawa for all of our exercises. One question, sorry. Yeah. Does Agukawa include a money model? Uh, yeah, yeah, it's okay. including. Uh, of course, it's, it doesn't. It is not bundled with uh, like rate conversions. Yeah. Yeah. It's something that you can set up after you <coughs> start. Yeah, this is it. You can work with money units or uh, distance. Or, yeah. <coughs> Actually, the model supports any kind of units. And then we have some small tweaks that we did to make this easier for the students and sometimes for, for us as a teacher. Um, we can, let's say you have a problem that doesn't happen on, on every small document, sometimes it will crash or the battery just uh, turn off your computer or whatever and you lost your changes, you can recover them. Um, you can restore them manually or you can restore automatically. So the first time you open an image that was broken, uh, you will see a pop-up that says, you have some changes to uh, that were not saved from the previous time, so I can automatically record them. Um, other thing that we have is just a way to limit the infinite loops that happens because uh, sometimes uh, just the students make a recursive call <coughs> and the image just hang and we have a limit. It's a process that watch for the stacks uh, size. So we can if it reach a limit if throws you a message and a pop-up that says oh, the stack is to you. But the image is not hanging up, right? So, that is um, we also have some uh, checks on the like static checks on the code to detect if we are uh, if we could have a recursion because we define an analysis that way. I think I can show you that. Uh, if I do something like this which students uh, do a lot because they are trying and experimenting. I can, uh, they can, maybe they want to reuse an, an implementation and they write self instead of uh, parent. Um, this is not working. Oh, this was the previous version. It's a nice pop up that says, You are defining a message. 
you are calling the same methods that you are defining. Okay. Um, another thing that we added, and it's a very simple thing but uh, powerful for our uh, approach for teaching, is changing some vocabulary around the tool. So, uh, we don't like a lot to talk about instance variables. Uh, we want to talk about uh, like internal collaborators. We, we like a lot the word collaborator, so they can uh, understand better what they are actually working with. So this is just a small change that we added um, to have them a more uh, nice experience. Um, so as I said before, we were shaping the tools to um, like having the debugger and also the browser and inspector working with these objects. And it's not uh, that hard to make a change. So uh, I know how much time I have, but I can do a quick demo of how to add change to this. Um, I will focus on the browser because it's an interesting thing to modify. So let's say that um, I wanted to, let's just compare the system. Right now, opening on the right is the system browser for classes, and this is the delta t object. So they are quite similar. Um, and actually, in terms of code, uh, the logic is not duplicated. So the object that represents the browser and the delta t object is also a class of the object that represents the browser. It's a this object on the left, this browser on the left, is just a specialization of the browser on the right. So let's say that I want to add this uh, thing here that is called the annotation pane, which is kind of an overview that you have when you select something. I select a class and I see how many methods it has and how many lines of code it has. And I select a message and I see who implemented it and uh, the timestamp and how many senders and implementers it has. Um, let's say I want to, to, to uh, have that into quiz, into uh, the denotative of the option process. So, to know how it is implemented, I will use the Halos feature, where you can select with the control, and I can inspect the graphical object <laughs> in uh, here. This option that's quick, we have uh, very big. So let's say I, I will I will move deeper on the like morph definition to go uh, inside this uh, model, and I will just inspect this. And I'm, here I'm in an exploring phase, so I'm trying to understand how this is working uh, behind the, the graphical visualization. So maybe I don't know, but I can just. Uh, go to the instance variables and see if, oh, I, it has some morphs or and something that morphs have a lot is a model object, which is the thing that provides you with the right data. Um, in this particular text uh, editor, actually it's just the text view, um, the model says that it will pull the text from the annotation message. So let's, let's try uh, to see where this is being implemented. So, for instance, I have uh, the browser implementation. So actually, the code that you are seeing here is the code that is uh, displayed here. Right? Depending on the thing that you have selected, you see an implementation. Um, this is one piece. We have the model to feed like, the visual component. Where is that visual component being built? So where is the code that says, I want text with this shape, and this uh, positioning, and this layout, and whatever. This is on the uh, system browser window. So I, what I can do is just, this time I won't inspect this object, but I will browse the class. So actually I can see how this is being implemented. Um, this is cool because it's showing a hierarchy browser, so I can go through a hierarchy and see what, uh, how many messages it has. Um, the method that I'm, I'm interested in here is in the, under the rebuilding uh, category, and particularly this one, which is the lower pane. And the lower pane, it has this, this section will have the annotation pane. So this is for the browser. And 
Let's see how this is on the velocity of those. So let's work with the class. And I have here the lower phase, so I can compare the implementations. And maybe for some simplification, just to make it too more easy, we didn't add the annotation at the very beginning, but we can add it, and it's not that hard. Okay. I, I will just, for the purpose of the demo, I will just copy and paste the code. But we can do, of course, a struct method and just doing more, um, more general solution, right? So let's um, implement it here. So I, I will just replace what I have with the thing that I have in the browser. So I'm trying to understand in my mind how this is work. So actually I can save this and see how, this, how it looks. Um, <clears throat> we'll save this, uh, like this, temporary. Okay. Um, that's enough. So if I open a new window, it will show me the implementation thing. It's not that hard to add, but unfortunately, uh, we need to do some more customization because let's say I want to select this light object and I see class definition, and that is not good because we want to hide the students that is a class. So let's work with the. Let's work with the annotation message and try to specialize it for, for the denotative object browser. Um, particularly, I'm interested in this network. Well, maybe. Uh, just to have more immediate feedback, what I can do is just to, uh, like, browse in the hierarchy of the browser, go to the denotative objects, and just overwrite annotation. This is something that I do a lot. So, uh, like having like just some example text here, so I can say and actually open the the object browser, and I can see the text here. So I have immediate feedback of what I'm doing. Um, now that I have that, I just want to have this with the right text. So I will remove this message because I'm not interested in that particular message. I'm interested in a message that is called inside the annotation method. Uh, Particularly, I'm interested in the class definition, which is this one. This one is implementation for the browser that everyone uses by default. So let's change this on the denotative object, which already goes. Yeah. The denotative object the browser, let's just write this new um, definition. And what I will do is to, when it's a class, I'll change it to option. Because I want to see uh, like an option definition, right? And it's not good that it says like class. Because if you want to hide that, it's a class. So this is like something easy to change because uh, we have a reference as like is actually a class. Um, what I don't want to have is the class name. So with this message I get just the like text and not like class. If I say here, I just refresh the view, I say just like. Um, one thing that I want to hide is the difference between instance and class method because we don't have such things. Um, in the nodity objects, we have zero instance methods. Everything is on the class side. So uh, let's choose this. <coughs> this. I will show you. You have methods. There's no difference between uh, instance and class methods. Um, also, we can tweak. Uh, I think that we are um, very. Uh, at the end, but we can just tweak also what is implemented here on the method annotation plane. But I, I think you, you already get the idea. So, um, let's go back to the presentation. So we have a lot of work to do on this because uh, just an ongoing version, we are uh, like 
teaching them and just asking the students, make them um, feel some surveys to see how this tool is being used. So we are trying to get feedback, as much feedback as we can. So some things that we want to continue working on or to start working on actually is to have more documentation of this tool in general and have more examples just like the line and the quiz. So the, Everyone can just install the image, open and start trying things. Um, adding more graphical objects, uh, for sure, and also things that help you to work with different images. Sorry, could you use this one? Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, as I said, um, we want to have. Uh, something to work with different images. Um, when we do some changes, like students have like a button or something to upgrade um, the tools because we are making change a lot. And we also encourage uh, students to work and tweak these tools. Sometimes they uh, they just find a message that is not uh, on, the, on the core objects, like collections, for instance, and we encourage them to propose them and to write them. Um, of course, the other thing that we want to add is refactorings, that we miss some of the most important ones. Um, just as a conclusion for this, um, we did changes on this tool, but we are also uh, making contributions to quiz because some of the changes, uh, like code cleanups, for instance, are also helpful for the whole quiz system, right? Um, we don't have much time to work on this, we just do it on the spare time, um, even though we have uh, like a decent set of features, so that, that's a good thing. Um, as I said, um, we want the environment to be simple, um, simple but powerful at the same time, so students can use this can use this and also the teachers can work with this uh, just for doing experiments. Uh, for instance, I, I work with innovative objects a lot because I don't want to start thinking of abstraction and creating glasses for maybe some experiments that I uh, don't have much idea of how they will look like. So I try with uh, these innovative objects. Uh, even though I, uh, I'm not learning something new, I'm just using this for experiment. Uh, of course, there's a lot of room for improvement. Uh, we are looking for contributors and feedback. Or, uh, anything will be helpful to improve this. And also, if someone is interested to uh, start using this tool or some courses in the universities, uh, we can help you get it set up with this. Um, so that's it. Working with classes, 
Um, in the terms of the tool, we have the transition like sorted out, but we have uh, students like, uh, they they took a lot of time to actually get the idea. Of, this is an object and this is a class, so. Uh, maybe we can do some more tooling to help them to like maybe some visual representation or something that they are uh, so they can understand what a class is like because it's a sometimes it's a, it's a concept that we took them for granted or something that is not uh, hard to do because uh, in most programming languages we start working with classes but actually defining a class is uh, something that uh, happens like after you see some examples and you have some abstractions. Uh, yeah, we, we have we have a lot of things to work on that. And I, and I will be happy to, to, to show some of the results after working with this. Maybe in the next step. But that also means that using this model first lowers the barrier of entry and but you it easy. Yeah. But that also means that using this uh, object model First, lowers the barrier of entry and makes it easier for students to get started, right? Yeah, yeah, that, 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 that was happening for sure. We have been using uh, like this approach, starting with objects and then with classes for like seven years or more. Um, just one year using this tool, but at the end of it, the tool is not, uh, it's not so. Uh, it just can be a medium to, uh, a media to, to get. To the actual thing that we are trying to uh, to show, but yeah, and this lowers the barrier uh, a lot. Um, particularly in Quiz University, they are happy to work with the same tools. So they learn to use the debugger uh, with objects, and then when, when they work with classes, they already know how to work with the debugger. And yeah, previously we have to teach them how to do TDD with a uh, test case classes and how to work with the debugger and it was really overwhelming. So this this makes us to order the things that we want to teach uh, better. Okay, thank you.